Hello everyone! So today's video is about how to pray, cultivating a prayer life. And this video was, was requested by someone and I'm so glad that it was because honestly this is such an important topic. The purpose of our life on earth is to know, love, and serve God so that we can be happy with him forever in heaven. One of the most crucial ways that we know and love God better is through prayer, is through our relationship with him. Like, yes, of course, also primarily through frequenting the sacraments, like going to mass, going to confession, but also it's like to be putting in the effort outside of the sacraments. Like, because that is really how we grow in friendship with the Lord, in friendship with Jesus. And there's this quote that I want to read. He wants all of us, he wants us to turn to him in everything we do, to connect with him even in the smallest details of our day, and to give him every bit of ourselves. God loves us so much that he wants us to pray without ceasing. He wants us to lift our hearts to him. God sees us and loves us. Can start right there and make the decision to grow in our relationship with him, giving him all of ourselves the way he gave himself to us. He delights in you. He delights in you. Bringing all of your needs and worries to him. It's like, you know, God's love, like it's supernatural. It's more than just human love, you know? Why we pray? Well, it's because we love God and so we want to spend time with him. We want to spend time conversing with him. I think just to remember, like, just in general, is like, really struggle with this. So I'm really honestly just telling, this is just a reminder to myself as well, is like, the struggle with comparison, like, comparing your spiritual and prayer life to your friends, especially like, it's hard, like, on social media and like, Instagram, like, you see all the Catholic Instagram bloggers and you think like well their prayer life is perfect and I just wish that I had the same spiritual maturity as them and be hard so it's just important to remember like there is no such thing as a perfect prayer life it's okay it's good and it's okay if your prayer life is simple like sometimes less is more I'm a convert and so when I first enter the catholic church i was obviously so happy and overjoyed but at the same time like really struggled spiritually and our faith is so rich like there is so much at our disposal to help you to pray there's so many devotions you know venas as much as how beautiful that all is it can also be overwhelming at times it's like where do i even begin kind of push myself too much and I was just like I just want to do it all but really it was too much for me really it ended up just kind of being like a checklist of things to get done and I wasn't getting it all done and then I was feeling discouraged that I wasn't able to do everything I felt like I was disappointing God you can't do it all and something that a nun was also telling me or, oh my goodness if you don't have any nun friends like it is so helpful and wonderful like talking to religious sisters like about prayer and your spiritual life but she was telling me it's maybe not necessarily about doing more like you doing more but like about opening your heart to him opening your heart to god being the real you in prayer only to like be fake because he knows everything about you god wants us to have a childlike spirit a childlike heart in our approach to him and that just really helped me like calm down and like simplify things prayer is not just me talking to god it's also silence and it's also me allow allowing the lord to speak to you um and listening being docile and receptive to him and a beautiful disposition to have in prayer imitating the humility and the disposition of Our Lady, of Mary's receptivity to God's will. Like when she said, when the angel came to her and told her that she was going to be the mother of the Savior, and she just accepts it and she says, let it be with me according to thy word. That is a beautiful prayer to say for yourself as if you have this missile in the margins here it's meant to be for like when you're going to receive holy communion but it's it talks about um 
Our Lady's disposition. So it says, We should open our will to Jesus Christ, leaving him free to act in us and accept in advance everything his grace will ask us to become. We should receive him as the Blessed Virgin received him at the Annunciation, concerned only with leaving him free to act with a will to conform to his will for the redemption of the world. Also, something similar to what St. Teresa of Avila talks about, let us not ask that our will may be done, but his. Humility is the ointment for our wings. Jesus teaches us how to pray. It's the Our Father, and it's asking for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And our Lord also gives us the example when the Garden of Gethsemane, before he is about to endure the Passion, he says, Not my will, but yours be done. I love the words of St. John the Baptist where he says, he must increase, I must decrease. Those are just all beautiful parts of scripture to reflect upon. Like with the disposition to have in prayer is really to pray that Jesus be glorified in our life. To ask God's help that we can honor him in all that we do. Mother Teresa's example, when, when she woke up every day, the first thing she said was, Good morning, Jesus. Like, just something so simple like that. Like, it's just acknowledging that you're going to live this day with Jesus by your side. You're going to, you know, do everything you can for Jesus and with Jesus. After saying good morning to Jesus, a really simple thing to say a morning offering prayer, which is basically offering your whole day to God. Part of glorifying God is, you know, offering your whole life as a sacrifice to God. Everything that you do it can be offered, like, as a prayer to God. Especially, like, things, like, that you don't like doing or, you know, doing chores, like, doing the dishes, cleaning your house, maybe doing homework. Like, all these things, it's, like, it takes up a lot of time in the day. And sometimes you can be, like, oh, like, I wish I could just, like, you know, spend this time, like, just praying instead. Well, really, you know, sometimes... God's will for you is just doing these things, but doing them to the best of your ability. Not a lot in this book. I think it's really helpful to have some sort of prayer book, which you probably have. But if you don't, there's tons of there's tons of that if you just go to a Catholic bookstore. Have a missal, like you know, there's different litanies because sometimes it's just hard to like put into words, like. But it is that you're trying to tell God, you know, so, but there's beautiful saints and there's beautiful prayers that we have, like the Anima Christi, that's one of my favorite ones. This book is amazing and tons of prayers, like at the end of each chapter. Like I was saying, sometimes it's overwhelming because you just want to like pray all the prayers. So something that I personally have found helpful is to kind of plan like well maybe every monday i'll pray the litany of trust like for this intention this day i'll pray the litany of saint joseph the way that has helped me like pray frequently throughout the day is just memorizing like some short prayers like jesus i trust in you come holy spirit Lord, have mercy on me. Things like that that you can just repeat throughout the day. It's more for like the vocal prayers. Have the beautiful vocal prayers, but like the rosary. Also, more like the mental prayer. The Ignatian method of prayer. And it really has to do with your imagination. Like, as you're reading scripture, like, you know, imagining you're a certain character in the Bible passage, imagining that. Jesus is in the room with you and imagining what so, what he wants to say to you. And that, because honestly, something that's really helped me to pray is meditating on heaven and meditating on the moment when God willing, when you meet our Lord in heaven. This Catholic blog on Instagram, she made a post about prayer. One of the points she made was meditating on the moment, like when you meet Jesus in heaven. 
And I had never thought of that before, but that's just something so beautiful. And actually, earlier today, I was reading this book. Um, it's by St. Alphonsus, and I just want to read you this one passage. It says, On the instant that a soul enters heaven and sees by the light of glory the infinite beauty of God face to face, she is at once seized and all consumed with love. The happy soul is then, as it were, lost and immersed in that boundless ocean of the goodness of God. She does indeed possess him. For every moment she offers herself to love without reserve, and God receives her in his loving kindness, and so holds her, and shall hold her in the same fond embraces for all eternity. Also praying with scripture. There is Alexio Divina. One day I'll do a video more specifically about that, but I'll just say for now that definitely when you're reading scripture, like just praying with that and asking God to help you apply to your personal life what it is that you're learning. But it's also important to converse with God, just offering your intentions to Him in your own words, and, or maybe just in your heart. It's a wonderful it's a Catholic website and it's called Having an Intimate Conversation with Jesus. It just, it gives you like prompts to think about like as you're talking to God. And also, if you have this missal, it's meant to be like for kids, but I read through it anyway. Because think about how your best friend Jesus might quietly say something like this to you. Do you have someone you want me to help? Like, are there some things that are bothering you? Tell me about these little crosses. Just pray about something. Tell me about the poor people you have seen. How can I help your soul? Tell me about your plans in life. So it's just like prompting you, like if you don't know where to begin or for what to say to God. There's different like acronyms as well that you can use. Acts where it's like A is for adoration, C is for contrition, T is for thanksgiving, S is for supplication. So there's different outlines like that that can help. Some other books that I honestly... There's so many books. I'm just obsessed with reading. I literally have all these books on my bed, and I don't want to talk about all of them, but anyways. But I'm going to recommend two books in particular that I've actually been reading through right now that have really helped me to pray. I'm talking about The Imitation of Christ. Okay, The Imitation of Christ. It is so beautiful. Beautiful prayers in it. So He and I, I just have no words. I just think every single girl needs to read this book. It really has helped me so much to pray in just realizing, like, the Lord's presence with me. Often a struggle. Sometimes is like we have our, like, daily prayer. Like, if you pray, you know, every morning. It's, then sometimes it's hard to, like, remind yourself of God's presence, like, throughout the rest of your day. But this book has really helped me just to like pray kind of more spontaneously throughout the day, like just in all your activities to remind you that God's presence is with you at all moments of your day. And like you can pray at any moment, you know, like not, you don't have to pray out loud, but just like in your heart, just like, you know, the quote from St. Therese, just, you know, lifting your heart to God. Jesus says, talk to me. For me, there is no sweeter prayer. You don't see me, but I'm always with you. Something else that I have found really helpful with prayer is to go in nature and just like sitting in nature and like admiring God's creation, how beautiful it is. And being like, wow, like the one who created all of this, like he loves me and he cares about me and he's with me and he wants to have a relationship with me. Like, I don't know, it sometimes just like seems like a bit of heaven on earth. But when you go on these walks, make sure to not bring your phone. Because so many times I'm like, I'm just gonna go on this walk. But then I bring my phone and I get so distracted. So whenever you're praying, turn your phone off. I feel like it's funny that I was just saying don't use your phone to pray, but there's just like two apps that I will recommend. One of the apps is Tieta, and it's free. I have like 
tons and tons of beautiful prayers. Find like if you want to pray with your phone, this is kind of more something like if you're like waiting in line somewhere or you know something like that where it's like you could do something to pass the time and you want to pray it's, or you can print out some of the prayers that you find on here and it's really organized well and you can like save them tons of languages too so you hello which is a bit more popular which i like using hello like if you want to like have a guide like as you're praying the rosary if you're like doing something you know it's not ideal like it's best to pray when you're <laughs> not doing other activities but sometimes you know like if you want to pray as you're i don't know like folding laundry or things like that like it is helpful to have the recording so they have rosary the free version which i have it has the rosary it also has the gospel reflection so and honestly also it's okay like if your prayer life and your how you pray like changes over time like prayer is just it's such a beautiful topic and it's also a big topic as well so it's definitely something that will continue to be discussed on this channel because prayer is a big part of a life of a Christian. hope that this video was helpful to you. It's okay to keep things simple. Just figuring things out myself, honestly. Leave any advice or questions you have in the comments. And also, now there is an Instagram page for a Catholic Girl's Guide. Bye! Thank you so much for watching. May God bless you.